Chad, you're either in or you're out with prime time. It, it, I don't think there's anyone like on the fence with, do you like what he's doing in Colorado or don't you like the, it, the, the emotion, the pageantry, all that about the sport of college football paired with the attitude and confidence and cockiness of what Colorado football is, right? Paul Feinbaum, SEC Media Day is going on. Paul Feinbaum uh, on SEC Network saying this about Dion, who's being discussed, by the way, a four-win team last year, being discussed while they're hosting a show in Dallas for SEC Media Days. Back on that for a second. Uh, anyone asking whether Deion Sanders and Colorado are close to the playoffs simply doesn't understand the reality of the road. They're, they're not going to the playoffs this year. And I'm not sure Deion Sanders is ever going to get them to the playoffs because I don't think he has the patience to stay at Colorado long enough. There, there's so many misconceptions out there. Deion Sanders is the best salesman I've ever seen. I, I, I personally love the guy and for what he stands for. But the program looking out has, has a ridiculously inflated view of itself. I heard Shador Sanders, who's a fabulous quarterback, say last week, we are everyone's Super Bowl. Shador, you are not. You are an easy win nowadays. You got off to a phenomenal start last year, beating a couple of mediocre teams that had big names. And, and quite frankly, you haven't done anything since other than crash and burn. So I know that the media loves this story. We fall all over ourselves. But Colorado isn't important in college football. Deion Sanders is. Uh, he's a standalone person. He's, he's one of the most charismatic people we've ever seen. Uh, but. Colorado is nothing. They don't matter. Uh, they're irrelevant in the big picture of college football. Do you think he will eventually take all these players that he's accumulated through the transfer portal and beyond and get to a college football playoff berth? Shay, to answer your question, I think it depends on how long Deion Sanders stays at Colorado. If he's there for five years, I think he will eventually get them to the college football playoff. Now, to address some of that ether that Paul Feinbaum just directed at Deion Sanders. Colorado is everybody's Super Bowl. The reason he, that they are the Super Bowl is because all eyes are on them. I still remember Dan Lanning telling his locker room that Colorado was there for clicks and they're there for wins, right? They knew that they went out there with a vengeance and they did blow them out, but they played harder in that game than they played in any other game of the season. So if Shadur in his mind is saying that, hey, Colorado is everyone's Super Bowl because they think they're so great, I can kind of see where Paul is going. But he's saying in the sense of everyone wants to beat them into the ground because they do have the number one quarterback in the nation. And they do have the number one wide receiver and, and cornerback in the nation in Travis Hunter. And they do have the biggest personality at the head coach position in Deion Sanders. There's RG3 giving the response to Feinbaum, Feinbaum saying he's not they're not relevant. They they are because of the numbers. They're relevant because the, the fans are watching games with Deion Sanders on the screen. We know that. Well, they're relevant because his own and, network, ESPN, is well, asking him a question about right. it at SEC Media Days. Yeah, no doubt. So your network is making him more relevant. But see, from so yeah, Feinbaum, they're relevant. From from Paul's stance, though, he doesn't have to talk and discuss Deion all that much based on what he's discussing every day with his right. show, with this SEC Southeastern approached show. Uh, he will, though, when Dion takes the Florida job. Well, and then, then all of a sudden, he wins, Deion, if he wins this year, yeah. Then all of a sudden, they're relevant. But uh, again, I, I say that tongue-in-cheek. But when he enters the conference or he enters uh, the uh, Power 2 or Power 3, uh, then we're, uh, maybe he's there. Maybe you could call it a Power 3 with what uh, the Big 12's doing. But the Power 2, well, all of a sudden, he becomes relevant, and we're still going to discuss him because, uh, I mean... Relevant now, yes. Uh, relevant in the season, they weren't at the end of the year. We didn't treat them that way. They were certainly relevant in September. Here's uh, Coach Prime, who uh, has blocked us uh, long before apparently he's blocked. Someone else must have read this tweet because we can't see it. Uh, well, someone retweeted it for us. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, so it says, oh, no, no, he, he retweeted. We couldn't see the retweet. Someone, someone pulled this for us since we're blocked. Yeah, it says, God is good, my brother, and they, they mad mad. I sense a bit of anger and hostility. L O L O L O L O L O. God bless RG3 for always keeping it 100. Now, uh, RG3 wasn't uh, glowing about the Colorado program. 
but he was about Shador Sanders. And here's the dynamic I'm curious about. Whenever they're uh, they're on the back burner of the season and they're not playing well, but Shador is. He's in the Heisman discussion. He's going to be. ESPN's going to make sure of that, right? We're going to get – everyone's going to be eyes on – RG3 just said it – the top quarterback in the country. If that's true, he's relevant in November. Will Colorado be relevant in November? And you have the – the yin and the yang of how does Dion approach it for his son and as a Heisman candidate versus a team that isn't performing all that well. If both are happening in a positive light, then they're certainly relevant to uh, counter what Paul Feinbaum is saying. If they're not as a team, then what's the attitude like from within the coach's office? What's the messaging there? Well, the defense I- mechanism. For son, not yeah. not player. Well, Hutton, I think, and I'll, I'll get to your point about that because I, I that to me is the ultimate question: is what does Deion Sanders desire to coach at Colorado if his sons aren't on the team as as they move forward, and and how the balance of that works? I think both guys got some things right and some things wrong. I think Paul Feinbaum's right that they're not competing for a a, a, a tournament spot, a playoff spot this year. And that they're not relevant in national college football as a team. They are relevant, though, as a talking point because of Deion Sanders. I think RG3 is right in that Dan Lanning and others are circling that game on their schedule to Mm -hmm. beat the shit out of Coach Prime because they don't like people coming into their sport and talking shit the way that he does. I think that's pretty... Common. And that's Shador. Yeah, Shador is like... Shador the same way. Like, yes. You think Nebraska well, fans haven't circled that and, game with Matt Rule versus Coach Prime? Like, he is the... And to, to quote the word, we just, the antithesis of a lot of coaches and what they talk about and how they try to build a program. So a lot of coaches are trying to destroy that level of buzz that he's created around his team and how he's trying to turn things over so fast and accomplish something so fast. So, yeah... They are the Super Bowl for certain teams. But I don't think it's because Shador Sanders is so great or Travis Hunter is so great. I think it's because they want to steal the spotlight from Deion Sanders and Coach Prime, who's brought the spotlight to Boulder. And to them in some cases. Because the spotlights, uh, Colorado, Colorado State, game day and big new kickoff were there. You know, and Colorado State showed up that game. Um, I, I will also say, and I pointed this out last year, it was fun during the first month of the season because every week, felt like a, a build-up to the next WWE pay-per-view where you have in a UFC uh, title fight in a pay-per-view where you have the build-up throughout the week, all the trash talk, all the promos. Uh, certain cases, you've got uh, Shadour saying things. Other times, you've got Dion saying things. They're going to the other coach for the response, Dan Lanning, for instance. Um, and then once the game's over, you have the initial post-game press conference, and then Dion took it to the next week almost immediately, where he's the next quote-unquote call-out, as you would say, to stay with this example, where then you're off to the next team trying to build and promote the next big national television brand, which is Colorado versus whoever. Uh, In terms of the spotlight, though, yeah, I mean, you want to go and ball out because, I mean, you're going to be on, you're going to be on Fox, you know, yeah. like it, and in some cases, 9 p.m. with uh, what, 1 a.m. Eastern, there were what, 2 million people on average watching at nine at 1 a.m. Yeah, Eastern. I, I, that game? I, I also I don't think it's just because of the I don't think coaches look at it. There's personal oh, animus no, the players, here. The players, yeah, the players, players want to be on TV for sure. But, no, but they're going after it based on the trash talk. Yeah. And also coaches just don't coaches are as petty as anyone in, oh. in America. And Deion Sanders has done it a very different way, and he's come from it at a different angle as a former Hall of Fame player turned TV guy turned quick turn operator in college sports head coaching. Never as an assistant, got a head coaching job at Jackson State, parlayed that quickly into a head coaching job at Colorado. So a Dan Lanning, who is young, by the way, you know, got a got a great opportunity as a young guy. Yep. Um you work your way through the ranks, the GA, and you live on someone's in someone's basement. You do this and that. That those coaches that do that, which are most of these guys that have been around it for so long, they don't want to see some flashy talking guy come in out of nowhere and steal their spotlight and beat them. So there is a little bit more worked up animus 
with those coaches as they go against Deion Sanders. Yep. And, and that's just human nature. And all the buildup. And what Dan Lanning said to his team pregame before Colorado's, uh, before the kickoff against Colorado at, with Oregon, spoke to that. I mean, he's, he's saying what they're fighting for clicks, we're fighting for wins. Our game's not played in Hollywood. Our game's played on the grass. You know, he had all these moments where he pointed out, like, they're all about the clicks, and we're, we're trying to actually build for a national championship run. Um, but, man, I liked it more when they were winning a bit. I, look, I, I am rooting for the story here, and the story is Colorado's better than they were a year ago. And that yeah. they're they're winning more games because the story was awesome early on when they got off to what three and zero start, mm-hmm. I think it was. But when you go four and eight in the end and win one conference game, the story diminishes. If they can stay relevant and competitive with good teams on their schedule throughout the year, where you get some true wars mm-hmm. between Coach Prime and these other coaches, that to me is the story. That that's what's going to be fun. I'm a little. Doubtful they can do that. But they're now in a conference where, I mean, you, I think you pointed out, Chad. It the, could be a little the, bit easier the for odds, them. The odds, whether there's one almost uh, odds against them and odds for them to win an individual game, right? And then the rest are almost toss-ups, almost a pick them. It's it kind of, yeah, 50-50. It's probably six points either way. Which they're is favored great for by the conference. six or a six-point underdog. Great for the conference and great for uh, Dion and, and Colorado to prove that they can back it up and actually – have the building blocks to uh, a bowl type season. You'd also think if you were moving from a conference that just blew up and ended to a conference that is strong and yeah. sustaining, that the new schedule would be tougher. That's not the case. I, I think you could argue last year's schedule was tougher in the Pac-12 as opposed oh, to especially their Big consecutive schedule this games year. like the the stretch. Yeah, USC and Oregon. Yeah, you know, Utah. teams that left. Yeah, that left. They'll, they'll get Utah this year too. And so that's one, that's saying, one but, constant. But I'm saying they would have those after. They would have those back to back to back. Yeah. Washington State, you know, was a, a storyline there, too. I mean, it's close, but I think this one might be slightly more favorable for Colorado. 